everybody welcome to my channel my name is Zoa if you guys don't know who I am so today I'm going to be showing you guys how I hoop my shirt using this infant um, station that I bought from Mighty Hoop so I am going to be showing you guys how I hoop a shirt and then we're going to work with sequins today so I bought this like last year from Hobby Lobby and I've been putting it off because I wasn't sure how to embroider it so anyways um, for this station you need to uh, put your hoop like this it has this top and then this bottom and you just put it in like this and then you just put the stabilizer here usually I would want like a longer piece so I can like close this so it'll hold the stabilizer in place but since this is a pre-cut fabric I mean not fabric stabilizer um, it's a it's a little bit short so I can't use this clip to clip it on which is fine I'll just clip a little bit down here okay and then I already um, marked my shirt like one inch down so what I do is I just fold in half like this and then I find the center line and mark it one inch from the neckline and I also mark a little bit at the bottom from the crease that I made to find the bottom so I can center it on here Um, you usually I do like I do a um, mesh poly mesh iron on the shirt but since this is just like a number application with the sequins I'm just going to try to do a tear away stabilizer and this is just for my daughter so we'll see You don't need this station. Sandra, a lot of the other YouTuber, they don't use this station. They just hoop the shirt like straight on. It's just me that I like to get this station because I want it to help with hooping to make it straight. Because I I'm just a little bit scared of that you know. I might be off so that's it you guys it, it looked like it's pretty center and then I make sure that this dot that I mark laid inside the hoop so when I put the design this will be right below that one inch mark that I mark and then all you do is just snap it in place like that okay and then I just pull it a little bit to make it taut for you to be able to tell that it is taut inside is you do the pinching method like this so when you pinch you can't pinch anymore everything's laid flat and it sounds like a drum Yep, then that's how you know that it's taut and you're not uh, supposed to pull it too tight or you'll stretch the shirt so that's how I use this infant station and then I will turn this camera so we can go and look at how I embroider it on the embroider machine so I load my design and I put my shirt and there so now I'm just going to hit this red button to unlock it so I can start embroidering so it's going to start the 
a placement stitch first. I use my ruler to measure like how much of a piece I need from the placement stitch and then I just cut the piece um, I think it's about five by six and a quarter so it leaves a lot of mess you guys can see on my table here so you guys have to make sure I think from what I learned you have to make sure all the sequence it's going in the same direction Okay, so I think all of them are in the same direction. So now we're just going to place it over the design. Whoops, you guys. I thought I cut a pretty large piece. I guess I was wrong. Let me measure it again. Nope, I thought I did. So, let's recut this again. Probably use that one for another design. I need to make sure it's That's how much I have to cut. I think because they shift too much. sequin fabric oh my gosh so messy so I have to make sure all my sequins going in the right direction so in the giveaway um, my second prize I'm giving you guys um, some sequence so you guys can play with it and you know maybe learn something from my video okay so I will show you guys a closer shot over here so as you, so you guys can see how the design stitch out so you guys I placed it on here right over it so here we go here goes nothing Sorry, it, it would be a little bit shaky because I don't have a tripod and I'm holding my iPad while I do this. Ooh, I'm a little bit scared. And I stitch right over it. Okay, so no needle breaks. Ooh. 
we did it. But I still have to do the satin stitch next. So let's take this and cut it right now. So now I'm going to take this off of the machine. Place it here. I think with this, I don't think they put heating bond on it. I didn't see they put any heating bond, so I didn't put any heating bond. Oh, I feel like it's gonna do my scissor. I think I have to get, I'm probably you should get two pair of these scissor. Was it might get dull pretty fast? Was the the other one that I got was already dull from me cutting too much of the canvas fabric when I do the you know the glitter canvas. So I will probably have to buy a second pair because these sequins are. Yep, it will do your. Scissor pretty fast. If you guys can hear, like, you know, oh, the sound of cutting sequins. <laughs> Oh my god, it's so messy, you guys. <laughs> mm. I don't know if I want to offer this design with this fabric, you know? I don't know. We'll see after this what's my thoughts. <laughs> That's just how messy and Oh, it's so hard to cut. Okay, you guys. So it's all cut now. Oh my god, you guys can see how much. Look at that. It's this such a messy, messy. Project. Okay. There we go. So make sure everything go the same direction. I like how it look, but I don't know. It's just a messy, messy project. Okay, so I will take you guys back over here to see the final stitch down. Okay, you guys, so I just put the shirt back on. So now going to do the final stitch. So you guys, I have to stop the video and um, you know, because I just realized that I got the wrong thread. I want to use a purple and I was using a pink and then now something happened so I'll have to uh, fix it. I'll have to put you guys down then we'll continue this.
So you guys, if you want to do sequence fabric, um, maybe you have to get like a design that has satin stitch. I don't think like the the bean stitch or the blanket stitch or the zigzag stitch. I don't know about the zigzag, but maybe like the blanket stitch and the bean stitch would not be a good design to work with. That's just my opinion. Like maybe they're not good to use for this type of fabric because you want the edge to be covered. You know, so I'm thinking any design that you do has to have like a large area of applique, such as like a like this large number. Like you don't want like a tiny tiny area about like one by one inch to be sequenced, you know? All it has to be about like two or more inches. That's that's what I was thinking. So and it's actually my first time, so I may be wrong. I mean, maybe the other design could be could be used uh, for this type of fabric too. But I think that satin stitch design would be better with the larger applique era. Would be great for like this type of fabric. So we're almost done here. And I can show you guys how it look. So after this, I'm gonna let it stitch on my daughter name and then we'll take it off and then we'll go over how it look. So you guys, it finished stitching out. So that is so shimmery and very pretty. I noticed that there was a hole right here. I'm pretty sure you guys can see that hole right there. Yeah. Um, I think it's my stabilizer. It's a tear away. So make sure. And plus this is a Walmart shirt. So it's a little bit thinner than like ARB or AJ blanks. But you should use a cutaway. Um, I'm not sure the poly mesh would do the trick, but I think use a cutaway a medium weight cutaway to prevent like that tear right there you know and then I think what I would do differently is try to cut off some of the sequins like these sequins that are like right here I don't like how they're sticking out like that if you guys can see yeah right there it's so I don't know if um, the other girls or ladies has that issue and they're a little bit pokey on the side so I have to you know if I have to like trim off all the side here so I don't know if I will be selling like this on my Etsy because if I have to um just trim off all the little sequence around the border um, that might be a little bit too much work. So I'll, I'll see. I'll have to do another test and see how it turns out and use a different stabilizer. Because this one was way too thin. But it actually works, see? I just don't like how I have to trim off the ones on the corner. They're a little bit pokey when I do this. They don't go nicely. So I have to trim off. You know, when, when they do the um, tack down stitch, I have to go in and cut each individual one that's going to be where the satin stitch is going to hit. And look, there's still some of the loose ones still coming off. So I don't know if this is worth it to um it look really pretty just I just don't like how it look on the edge okay so that's just my opinion but I do another test and see how 
how I like it. I just don't like all these sequins are poking through the. Maybe it's just how it is, but I will have to trim off like the extra sequin when I do the tack down stitch stuff. So yeah, anyways, I hope you guys like this video and you guys get to see how sequin fabric stitch out on an embroidery machine and there's no needle bright so you guys can do it anyways you guys <clears throat> if you guys have any questions just leave in the comment down below and i hope you guys have a good day take care you guys